As a parent, is it your responsibility to pay for your kid's car? Or as a responsible adult in training, is it their responsibility to pay for their own car? Or should you give them a boost, but not all the money? Maybe you should match what they save. We're gonna talk about all of that. With a vehicle comes all kinds of expenses from the price tag itself, to gas, to maintenance, to insurance. So we're gonna talk about the options for buying your kid's first car first, and then we'll talk about the rest of it. If we haven't met yet, my name is Kalen. I'm the founder of Freedom Sprout, where we talk about raising intentional children and living intentional lives. If that interests you, please hit the subscribe button below. Let's start with who pays for the car itself. Obviously there's no right or wrong answer here, but I'm gonna give you four ideas on how you can decide who pays for your kid's car. Number one, you pay for their car. Some parents wanna pay for their kid's first car. They think they're doing them a favor by buying them a car, and in a way they are, but personally, in my experience, people take better care of things whenever they're invested in those things. So if they're not personally invested in any way, they may not take as good care of the car, but it's your prerogative. Number two, they pay for the car. Saving your own money and paying for your own car can teach work ethic and saving skills. It can teach the value of delayed gratification, and it can help to instill discipline. So if your kid pays for their own first car, they're going to learn how life works early on. Number three, you get them started. A little boost would be nice, maybe $500 or $1,000 towards their car. A lot of that depends on what you can afford, and it would be helpful. You wouldn't be leaving them to fend for themselves, but you also wouldn't be providing everything for them. Number four, you match what they save. If your child saves $1,000, they can buy a $2,000 car with your matched money. If they save $15,000, they can buy a $30,000 car with your matched money. If you do choose this route, I highly suggest saving at the same rate as your child, so you don't get caught off guard whenever they have $10,000 dollars in a savings account and you weren't ready for it. And of course, this option may not be reasonable for your wallet, but only you know that. I would also recommend setting some terms, like maybe special gifts and bonuses don't count, so whatever they specifically save through work you match, but if they get some sort of $10,000 from grandma or something like that, save a rich grandma, then you don't necessarily match that money, but you match the money they save for. And for parents with a lot of children, this may not be the most reasonable option. So this is what we're doing. We're taking option four and we're matching what our kids save and here's why. It encourages them to save, it allows us to bless them still, and simultaneously it puts some of their own skin in the game. We know that all five of our kids do save or are going to save at different rates, so again we have savings accounts and accounts that match what they save so that it's easy along the way, and then whenever it comes time to actually buy the car, we have the money saved up that they saved, so we can just pull it out and give it to them. Who should pay for car insurance? The first big question here is, at what age is your kid going to start driving? The younger they are, the more expensive insurance is going to be. If you look at the statistics, they all point to 18 being the youngest your child should start driving from a safety standpoint. Between the ages of 16 and 18, there's a lot of scary statistics that driving is extremely dangerous between those ages. And I do recommend looking at those stats if you're thinking about letting your kid drive before they turn 18. A lot of states require you to be 18 before you can drive by yourself now, and it seems like more and more states are going that route. Paying for insurance is very similar to paying for the car. You can pay all, part, or none. There are different ways to do it. We'll talk about maintenance in a minute, but that's another factor to consider whenever you're thinking about paying for insurance or not. And real quick, there are some discounts they can apply for, like the good student discount, and there are not a whole lot of discounts for young drivers, so I highly recommend them applying for that if they meet the criteria. I'll put a link to that below, but to qualify, you have to be under 25 years old, you have to have a GPA of 3.0 or higher. You have to show a status of being a good student and you have to be enrolled in either high school or college full time. Again, there aren't a lot of options for discounts whenever you're a young driver, so take advantage of that one. I'll put a link below. Here's what we're doing for insurance. We're gonna pay for their insurance. We're gonna pay for part of it. If they want a more expensive car to insure, then they can pay the difference based on what we would consider a more reasonable car, but we'll pay the base rate and then they'll pay more depending on the kind of car they're gonna drive. Who should pay for gas and maintenance? First off, encourage your kid to have an emergency fund for their car. Their car is likely the only area they have to worry about maintaining or worrying about unexpected expenses, so it should be easy for them to get that emergency fund. $500 is typically enough to cover most of the basic maintenance and the unexpected expenses outside of the really serious problems. The more that we as parents pay for these expenses here and there, the more we show involvement in our kids' lives. Whichever way you decide to go, let it be well thought out and well laid out for your children so they know what to expect. Here's what we're doing for gas and maintenance. Our kids are going to pay for their own maintenance, but we'll pay for their gas. You could reverse that, or again, you could do the pay all or pay none method. For us, we're only going to pay for the gas as long as they're using the car for school or college or other activities related. 
for learning and things like that. If they want to start going to parties or just to go hang out with their friends all the time, if it gets to be too much, then they're going to pay for the difference in the gas they're spending on those things. And we'll still pay for the gas for the things that we may consider necessities. Now, this is an important question whenever we're talking about kids and cars, and it's going to come up every time. Should your kid get a car loan? No. Next question. Okay. So it's obvious that I hate debt. I'm against debt in general. I think it's a dangerous idea for you to put your children in debt or for you to allow them to go into debt, especially before they turn 18. They don't have to start the real world with debt. And going back to the statistics, an 18 year old really doesn't need a nice enough car to warrant a loan. Judging solely on the statistics, they're not gonna take that great care of it. And there is a high probability that they're gonna get in some sort of accident, even if it's a small fender bender. So if they do decide later on in life that they wanna get a car loan and they wanna go down that road, pun intended, then let them them, but don't get them down that road before they leave home down the debt road. And regardless of everything I just said, if they still decide or you still decide for them that they are going to get a car loan, should you co-sign for your children? Again, the answer is no. Next question. But I'll explain a little bit more. When someone needs a co-signer, be it your child or anyone else, that means that the bank doesn't think they're going to pay the money back. That's the reason they need a cosigner. Not only that, but this could damage your relationship with your child whenever you bring money into the equation like this because you're agreeing to pay for something if they don't pay for it. And if they don't pay for it, that could lead to relationship problems. So don't justify this decision of cosigning by saying that you're helping your child build their credit or you're helping them get started in life. They shouldn't be so worried about debt and getting into it that they want a super high credit score in the first place. Co signing is simply you saying, if you don't pay this loan, mom and dad will bail you out. And I don't think that's the impression you want to give your children for the rest of their lives. So on co-signing, the short answer is never co-sign for anyone on anything ever, no matter what period. But after all of that, if you do decide to co-sign still, here are some important things to consider. Make sure you agree with the purchase. Make sure you can afford to pay the loan if they don't. Make sure it's in the contract that you will be notified if they don't pay because your kids aren't always going to be the ones to tell you. Make sure you understand all the consequences and everything you are obligated to in the situation. And make sure you read your state's laws on co-signing to know the rights you have or don't have typically. Again, I recommend not co-signing at all, but here are five things you can do instead of co-signing, instead of just flat out saying no and then walking away from your kids. Number one, explain to them why co-signing is such a bad idea. Number two, suggest that they don't take a loan out at all at their age. Number three, help them to learn to save for big purchases like this. Number four, explain that your relationship is more important than this loan and that's the reason you're not co-signing. And number five, explain why they shouldn't co-sign for other people either, which they should understand after the first four points. Finally, I don't want to go without talking about what to do if you already co-signed. Maybe you think it's a bad idea or you thought it was a bad idea, but you did it anyways or you didn't realize, but there are some things that you can do if you have already co-signed for your kids or anyone. So here are three things to do if you've already co-signed and it went south. First, you can attempt to work out a payment plan with your child that you co-signed for. If you're still in contact with them, they may be willing to at least help pay the loan even if they can't pay the full amount. The second thing you could do is call the lender to negotiate an agreement the lender may be willing to work with you, especially if you're not able to pay. They would rather get something than nothing, and they really don't get anything whenever they sell those loans to debt collectors for pennies on the dollar. So you may be able to negotiate a lower balance or at least a lower interest rate. And the third thing is stay disciplined and learn from this. It may have been a bad idea for you to co-sign, but maybe you didn't know it at the time or whatever the case. Instead of complaining about it, it would be a good time to just learn from it. I doubt you'll ever do it again, and the good news is this could be the last time you ever do it. So when it comes to kids and cars, let me know in the comments how you do it or how you've done it in the past with your kids who pays for the car who pays for the insurance the gas the maintenance i would like to know how you guys have done it so share in the comments below and before you go please subscribe to get more videos on money minimalism and our travel journey around the world check out my new book intentional children there's an entire chapter in that book on kids and cars and it even gets down to how to get a good deal on that first car and a checklist to use whenever you're inspecting a used car all that stuff intentional children i'll link that below that's all for today i will see you next week